Okay, this is what we did for our bunny cage. We used a retriever, five by 10 dog cage. We put wire all the way along the bottom, all the way across, chicken wire, to keep animals from digging. Fox and uh, rabbits are a problem in our area. So we buried this. My brother has pheasants and he lost a couple pheasants because a fox dug underneath his cage and got to his pheasants. Foxes also will reach through and grab the prey through the wires if, it's, um, if they can fit their hand through. So the goal here was to go about a foot, foot and a half up, keep the bunnies in, predators out. Obviously a roof because raccoons can climb. Very secure on there, there's no real holes for them to lift up on. We just use this little thin gauge wire to secure it on. We chose this house because I didn't want just a little bunny hutch. I wanted my kids to be able to get in there with the bunnies, play with them, hang out with them. I also wanted it tall enough so the adults could get inside and be with the kids and the bunnies. Have three watering stations, automatic food dispenser, we bring them fresh fruit, uh, fresh celery and carrots and things uh, from our house that we're not going to use. They can also eat the grass right through the through the chicken wire. The hope is when this chicken wire gets bigger, or sorry, excuse me, when the grass gets taller, we just installed this last week, so it's all padded down. But when the grass gets taller, it'll go through, and you'll kind of forget the chicken wires there, because that's kind of a tripping hazard a little bit. We're starting to weave it in with these ropes. I don't know if you can see that. Weaving it in so the chicken wire is not um, such a tripping hazard, but they seem to do pretty well. Watering the bunnies is the biggest challenge. I bought two new watering cans today. So I have three 32 ounce cans and a ground waterer. Have bunny pellets right next to our garden. This is our land in Montrose, Colorado. And my wife's out there hunting asparagus. You'll see her. She wants a knife for her asparagus. Here is the, here's the garden, my wife's baby. She has tomatoes, bell peppers, cherry tomatoes, all kinds of flowers, beans. She put this trellis in yesterday. Did that nice little horse uh, swing. Picked that up at a yard sale for 25 cents. But springtime, this is living the dream for us on the property. That's our tent. That's where we hang out for now. We'll build a house right on the edge of that ridge. In probably two or three years is what it'll take us to save. We installed fruit trees all along here, right next to this watering, um, this little irrigation ditch. Here's a cherry tree I planted. Um, we did that so that we wouldn't have to water everything ourselves, that it would just self-water. And kind of a pretty area. Uh, this is, we have 21 cows right now, I believe. 22 actually, 11 moms, 11 babies, 11 calves. Oh, 22, because we do have a bull. The bull's working on the next round of babies with the mamas and here is our pond. Irrigation fed. I did not build the dam. Here's another one of those irrigation springs I told you about. I throw a tarp down when I wanna push the water a certain way. Now I'm pushing it out this way to get this a little bit more wet. I built that dock two weeks ago and that's basically the property. We planted 12 fruit trees this year a bunch of willow trees and we're getting excited to move this is where our house will go right on this hill we'll have a walkout basement and then the pond right there we did not want neighbors i don't want an hoa um, there's dangers in that but also a lot of freedom we'll grow our own food as much as we can there's a cherry tree there a peach tree and a nectarine tree this peach tree was a uh, bare root contender peach tree. It's a red cherry tree. And then that's a pear tree. No, not pear, excuse me, nectarine tree. We also have this irrigation ditch kind of keeping this area all wet. 
There's my apple tree right there in between there. A lot of cottonwoods, Russian olives. It's basically our property tour. I hope you like it. It's 35 acres, 36 acres. 23 of it looks like this, green and lush. And 13 is the Badlands dead up there. It all depends on where the irrigation canal is. We have an irrigation canal that separates the property in half. And the half below the irrigation canal, green, pretty, lush. And the 13 acres above the irrigation canal is the Badlands from Lion King, of course. Looks like that. Still pretty, but dead. The cows do like to go over there still to eat the grass, which is strange because there's so much grass over here. It's weird that they like to cross that. We get a lot of deer, so all of our trees are wrapped in wire and T-posts. But that's it. That's our farm in a nutshell. It's gonna take a lot of work. We bought it eight months ago, six or seven or eight months ago. And we're saving up money to put a single wide on this area over here. We'll just pay cash for it. So we're just saving up little by little. We'll put in the septic one month. We'll build the foundation as we get it, pull permits, all that. And then we'll live in that because really we just want to be on the property. And then when we saved up enough money, we'll build our house over here. And that's the goal. Here's the best part of the property. Pretty wife. Pretty baby. Pretty baby walking around enjoying the sunshine and the new baby lambs. Okay, so I'm finding a wild asparagus and I'm looking for these kinds of things. These big bushes. This one has a little bug on it. But that's an overgrown asparagus. And so I'm searching the grass all around for ones. And I just found a good one. This one right here. Deep in the grass. You couldn't see it until I moved it around. But see, here's this one was munched on. So I'm just going to take it off down at the bottom so that more can sprout up but want to get it down in the dirt so that the roots the, cr the crown of the plant will produce more but we can eat that with with vegetable stock <laughs> as vegetable stock uh, as vegetable stock <laughs> with vegetable with stock on the side <laughs> put all these dead ones off ta-da all these little tenders I bet there's more so excited! Get them. Okay. All the little babies. Yeah, why not? Huh? Why not? Huh, Ayla? Little baby. Oh, that would be great. Cute. Little micro. And here's a bigger one. Came off super good. That's delicious. That's like from the grocery store. <laughs> she likes to put things in there. Little helper. There's the third one. This is the big one. That one. Oh, and there's another one coming to it. But that one's not edible. See? That one's yummy. She can't get the little ones. That's good. I bet there's another hiding in there somewhere. Mm. They're so camouflaged. I was helping me irrigate. Just hit it. To irrigate. I put little rocks inside. My wife's out there walking the fence line for asparagus. And then I kick the water out. So if you see I shoved that rock in, now it's gonna start flooding out this way and get this area that's dry, wet. 8.30, 8.20 p.m. Here's a view of the lake or the pond that we made. Here are the frogs in the background. Good time of day here. She's getting stuck in the water. The other two girls are looking for bugs right there. What you got? Up. Carrots are sprouting. Look, so deep. Wow, Sarah. They're a little tight. This is a weed, but these are carrots. That's awesome, honey. And there's your tomatoes. Yeah. And peppers. They're doing. Some are good, some are bad, but we have our first tomato. Nice. In there, in this one. There's a hawk flying around the background. Yeah, he's looking for our bunnies. Or maybe that's just a crow. Looks like uh. it's a crow. <laughs> 
Okay, the hardest part is keeping enough water for the bunnies. So we went and bought two 32 ounce water watering cans. We also have the groundwater that we fill up. We don't live on this site, but we come up every other day. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you like the property tour and rabbit cage. Stay tuned for more videos, subscribe, and we'll show you as we put this thing to life.